in the headlines. Bola Tinubu beats 13 contenders to clinch APC presidential ticket. Governor Akiri Dolu confirms 22 deaths in all-war Catholic church attack. Bandit's wife releases abducted six-year-old girl from captivity. And on the foreign scene, train derailment kills at least 17, injures over 50 in Iran. Hello and welcome to Trust News Update. I'm Dashan Husseina Usman. We begin with politics. Former Lagos State Governor Bola Ahmed Tinubu took a major step towards his ambition of becoming Nigeria's president by winning the All Progressives Congress presidential primary at a special convention held in Eagle Square, Abuja. He won the election by beating Vice President Yemi Oshibajo, former Minister of Transportation Rotimi Amechi, and the Senate President Ahmed Lowang. More than 2,300 delegates voted in the contest that produced Tinubu as the presidential flag bearer of the ruling party. He won with 1,271 of the over 1,000 votes cast in the convention. The former Lagos governor is now scheduled to face the People's Democratic Party's Atikwa Abubakar and others in the February 25 presidential ballot. This is to certify that as you are doing Bola Ahmed Tinibu, having scored the highest number of votes cast, is hereby declared winner. And, and in, line, in line with the provisions of, our, of the constitution of our great party and guidelines for the nomination of candidates, and by the power conferred on me as the returning officer of this special presidential primary convention, I, Senator Abubakar Atiku Babudu, do hereby declare Asiwaju Bola Ahmed Tinibu as the presidential candidate of our party in the post-coming 2023 presidential election. On behalf of all of us on this podium, particularly members of the Convention Planning Committee and Subcommittees, I congratulate Mr. President, I congratulate the Chairman of our party, and I congratulate our Presidential Black Bearer, Aswaju Bola Ahmed Chinibu. As the 2023 general elections draw nearer, the need for registered voters to collect their PVCs to enable them to participate in the process has again come to the fore. This is to ensure that voters are not disenfranchised while those elected do not face legitimacy crisis from those who could not cast their votes. The report. Every four years, Nigerians troop out to electing leaders who they believe will provide the much-needed dividends of democracy that will make life easier for them via a democratic election. Most times, the number of people that elect leaders are small compared to the overall population. Out of the over 84 million of the registered voting population, a good number of them have no PVC, a situation that leaves many worrying. First and foremost, as a Nigerian, it is part of my civic right to have my permanent voter's card so that I will have the opportunity of voting to select my leaders or leaders during the general elections. To these civil servants, the method of collection and distribution of PVC ought to have been flexible as most people could not afford spending long hours for collection. It's very important to get our PVC because that is the only power to elect our leaders that is the only assets that we can use to elect the leader of our choice. Whoever emerges through a process where majority do not participate could suffer legitimate crisis, according to these political scientists. 
The capability of INET to register a large number of prospective voters, he said, is another factor why many do not possess the PVC and calls for an improvement in the process. Well, you see, even the seven out of every ten Nigerian, um, the 72 million that have the PVC, we can say their PVCs are ready, but not all of them are actually in possession of the PVC. And this is not a good development for the country's democracy, for the individual citizen, and for the entire political process. Taking part in the process of electing leaders is a civic responsibility that requires all eligible and registered voters to participate in. Ondo State Governor Rotimi Aikeredo Lu in the state broadcast on Tuesday evening confirmed that 22 people died in the Sunday terror attack on St. Francis Catholic Church, Owa, Ondo State. The governor, who said he had directed that all flags be flown at half mast for seven days since Monday, put the casualty figure at 80. He said at the time of the broadcast, 56 are on admission to discharge while the death toll is 22. The governor said efforts have been intensified to prevent further casualties. Akeredo Olu urged the people to be calm but remain vigilant and not to take the law into their hands. On insecurity, a six-year-old girl identified as Ummi, who, abduct, who was abducted by bandits in Zamfara State, has been released by the wife of her captor. The girl and 74 others, according to Daily Trust, were abducted in an attack on Yerkatsana community in Kekungwaje district of Bungutu local government area of the state early this year. The armed men, after the payment of 4 million Naira ransom, had released the other residents but held on to Ummi with one of them saying he had decided to adopt her because he had never bore any child. However, four months later, her captor was reportedly killed in a gunfight with vigilantes. Thereafter, the slain bandit's wife asked Ummi to find her way back home because her custodian was killed. Reports say she released Ummi, who spent days wandering inside the forest before she eventually navigated her way to one herder's settlement before she was reunited with her family. National, Natural, National Drug Law Enforcement Agency says it has dismantled 14 illicit drug joints and arrested 100 suspected peddlers in the last four weeks in Kaduna State. The state commander, Umar Adoro, made this known in an interview with newsmen on Wednesday in Kaduna. He said operatives of the agency conducted a series of raids in Kaduna and Zaria City in May 2022. He said the apprehended peddlers comprised 93 males and 7 females. Adoro listed the 14 dismantled drug joints to include Abakwa, Malali, Terkania, Rigasa, Romi, Film Minister, Chikaji, Sabangari, among others. While reiterating the commitment to the fight against drug abuse, Adoro urged the people to give credible information to security agencies to curb the menace in the society. On education, members of the Academic Staff Union of Colleges of Education in Kwara State have embarked on in an indefinite strike to press home their demands for the implementation of the new salary grade in consonance with their colleagues across the country. Meanwhile, the management of the four institutions on their part are appealing for understanding as the government has set up committees to look into their demands. The report. The strike by the academic staff of colleges of education across Quara is to draw the attention of the state government to the need to pay their full compass instead of the 70% being paid now, among other demands. At the expiration of the ultimatum, the failure of the state government to address our issue by implementing the new compass with arrears from January 2022, the academic staff of the four consigned colleges are directed that we should resume the suspended strike indefinitely. This time, they claimed the strike will be indefinite as all efforts to meet the governor has not been successful. Uh, we are appealing to His Excellency. We have used all avenues to get in touch with him, but all proved abortive. So the directive from our Congress is, is that we should have an encounter with His Excellency to yield to our, the, the plights of the members of the academic staff you know, of these four colleges. So on behalf of the 
executives of the four colleges and the congresses. I, we are appealing to His Excellency to come to our aid. The workers blocked the entrance to the College of Education in while students looked dejected following the fate that has befallen them. The management of the four colleges had earlier pleaded with the lecturers to shell the strike, citing the contribution made by the governor in settling the arrears and the recent meeting on how their demands will be met. Optimistic that the union will listen to our appeal and they will allow the peace to reign, most especially when the government has inaugurated the committee through the Office of Head of Service in Kuala State, a powerful committee. So I'm very optimistic that. Uh, everything will go well as expected. The proposed strikes by our unions, we want to make a very strong appeal to them to please, in the interest of peace, shape the ideas of this uh, strike that is uh, coming up, coming this Monday. The strike will indeed have negative effect on the students who are hopeful that a lasting solution to the lingering crisis at colleges of education will soon be addressed. The FCT Muslim Pilgrims Welfare Board is to commence the airlifting of the first batch of intended pilgrims to Saudi Arabia on Friday. To this end, the board has directed intended pilgrims from the territory to report at the permanent Hajj transit camp located at Basanjiwa near the Namdia Zikiwe International Airport, Abuja, immediately. A statement from the director of the board, Muhammad Nasirud M. Malam, said the campaign is to prepare the intending pilgrims for their airlift to Saudi Arabia. M. Malam informed that the first flight of FCT intending pilgrim is scheduled to be airlifted on Friday and requested those in the first flight to report on Thursday from 10 a.m. for the collection of their travel documents and other preparations for the airlift. You're watching Trust News Update coming up after the break. What toilets in public buildings look like? Do stay with us. To every politician, as the campaigns gain momentum and passions begin to rise, remember the errors of your opponents do not make you a success. Do not run down your opponent and inflame passions to violence between and among your supporters. What counts is what you plan to do for the electorate and how you intend to relieve the sufferings and bring succor. Nigeria is in dire need of patriotic leaders at all levels. Leaders who will make national development their priority. Concentrate on telling the electorate what you intend to do when you get into office. Focus on making your vision clear to the electorate. Don't engage in verbal abuses, fake news or speeches. Keep dealing with issues that will bring progress. You win the hearts and minds of the people by being above board, by being civil, patriotic and showing empathy. Let's join hands to make the 2023 elections peaceful. A message from the National Orientation Agency. Welcome back and thanks for staying with us. You're still watching Trust News Update. Let's take a look at some of our top stories. We told you that Bola Tinubu beats 13 contenders to clinch APC presidential ticket. You also heard that Governor Keredolu confirms 22 deaths in Awa Catholic Church attack. Moving to more news, property owners whose buildings were demolished for road construction in Oshobo, Oshun State, have lamented that the state government has not paid them compensation since 2013. One of the property owners, Funke Afolabi, who spoke on behalf of others, said while some of those affected have died, many are sick and others facing serious financial challenges. Hamid Oyigbade files in this report. 
In 2013, shops and buildings, including a petrol station, were demolished to pave way for road dualization in Oshobo, Oshun State Capital. The structures on both sides of Fakunke area, Olaya Junction and MDS area were affected. Since then, the owners of the affected properties have been waiting on the state government to compensate them. Alaji Shoaibu Abola, the owner of the demolished petrol station, begged Governor Adeboyega Oyetola to pay compensation to the property owners without further delay. I am the owner of uh, one of the station at Olaya Junction. This was uh, among the structure that the big broke down in 2013. And we want you to please, in the name of Allah, try to help us. We have our own. We have learned that we have some, some people. Also speaking on behalf of other affected property owners, Funke Afolabi and Lasisi Adewale reminded Governor Yetola of his promise to pay their compensation and pleaded with him to fulfill his promise. Please pay our compensation since 2013 they have demolished our building and we heard that they have, they have issued some check for for all uh, for other people from um, uh, Orita Oni Secretary to whole garage and we from whole garage to Olaya Fakule MDS they've not paid our money as the governor promised when he resumed office that he's going to pay us but uh, uh, Instrumentally, maybe three times or four times. But now, it's a cheating. What applies to A is applied to B. They're supposed to consider us and pay our money. We have been expecting these things. But up till now, we have not been paid anything. So we are still expecting the governor to please act according to his words. Commissioner for Works in the Oshun State, Remy Omoaye, urged the property owners to be patient as government concludes modalities for the payment. President Muhammadu Buhari in April signed Executive Order 11, sanctioning maintenance of federal public buildings across the country. The president said the order would reinforce the national public building maintenance policy approved in 2019. Trustee Vice Ibrahim Ismail observes a maintenance culture at the federal secretariat complex in Gombe State two months after signing the order and files in this report. This is the Gombe State Federal Secretariat, located behind Gombe Motor Park. The four-story building has a walk and wheelchair ramp, but has no lift. The environment is looking very clean and the toilets are tidy. Some civil servants whose offices are in the building speak. We have our cleaners that uh, every morning they come to office to clean all the offices and place, a place of convenience that uh, they always clean. And uh, maintenance here, the cleaning, the cleaning is very perfect. They are always on time. The toilets too, they are trying. Uh, I commend the effort of uh, the management of the Federal Secretariat because they have cleaners, they maintain the toilet and everything. In fact, if I'm to grade them, I will give them distinction or excellent for the maintenance culture in the Federal Secretariat complex. However, some of the civil servants asked the Ministry of Works to fix the problem of water supply in the complex as the Ministry is saddled with such responsibility. We have to ask all those workers to take water from the main reservoir up to our floor. We occupy the second uh, floor. It's just that, you know, water doesn't come upstairs. I'm on the third floor. Water doesn't come up. So, you know, they'll have to take water from down, up. And sometimes, so that makes it the water is not always regular. The toilets are not usually clean. So all they do is just mop and clean because of lack of water coming up. The National Orientation Agency, Gumbe State Office said, civil servants have a role to play in the maintenance of public buildings. There are small repairs that we can do. And there are things that we can do to keep the place in order. So it's a trust. Let's do it. Let's repair it. Let's look after it so that those even after us when we go will come and use the 
infrastructure. Efforts to speak to the Federal Ministry of Works responsible for maintenance of the Gombe State Federal Secretariat was unsuccessful as the work controller was not on seat during Trust TV's visit from Gombe. Ibrahim Ismail reporting for Trust TV. Authorities at the Asaba airport say they are targeting improved services and international flight operations with the successful verification of the instrument landing system at the airport. Manager and director of the Asaba airport company, Christoph Pinnick, disclosed this in Asaba while addressing journalists during the verification of the ILS at the airport. He said with the successful verification of the calibration of the ILS, airlines will be able to land at the airport even at deteriorated weather conditions up to 800 meters. The Asaba airport boss noted that the verification done with the aid of a drone was the first of its kind in the country, adding that it gives a more accurate data and does not disrupt traffic. that it doesn't disrupt any traffic. So once we hear from the tower that there's an aircraft departing, it takes seconds to move the drone away. We wait for the aircraft then to depart or want to land, and then we can go again to perform the uh, uh, verification. Hopefully one day Nigeria will sign the agreements with ICAO and recognize this kind of uh, calibration because then we will be able to do calibration with a more efficient, definitely uh, environmentally friendly equipment. In business, Association of Food, Beverage and Tobacco Employers has identified the country's poor infrastructure and insecurity as issues impeding the food and beverage industry growth. The employers urge the federal government to find lasting solution to these challenges to enable the industry make reasonable progress. The president, Patrick Anegbe, who made the request during the association's 43rd annual general meeting in Lagos, uh, said the funding shortfall has been a tremendous drain on member companies' resources because they have had to build their own infrastructure. He bemoaned the fact that their efforts had gone unnoticed by tax and other authorities who had refused to grant relief for the expenses uh, their enterprises has incurred as a result of the government's incapacity to fully serve them. On the foreign scene, at least 17 people were killed and dozens injured Wednesday when a train derailed near the central Iranian city of Tabas after hitting an excavator, state media reports. The deputy head of Iran state-owned railways, uh, Mir Hassan Musavi, told the state broadcaster that the train was carrying 348 passengers. Some of the injured were airlifted to hospital by helicopter, state television footage showed. Rescue teams inspected the overturned carriages as onlookers gathered nearby. Pictures posted by the Isna News Agency showed. Five of the train's 11 coaches came off the track in the accident. The Iranian Red Crescent head of emergency operations, Mehdi Valipur, told state television. The Tabas prosecutor visited the scene as a judicial investigation was launched into the course of the accident, Iranian media reported. Iran has turned off a number of cameras installed by the global nuclear watchdog after Western powers introduced a resolution to censure it. The Atomic Energy Organization of Iran announced on Wednesday that it has turned off the online enrichment monitor and flow meter system of the International Atomic Energy Agency at an unidentified nuclear site. The organization's statement added that more than 80% of existing agency cameras are covered by the safeguards agreement and therefore remain in place and operational. 
And finally, in sports, Alexander Zverev has had surgery on torn ligaments in his right ankle following his painful exit from the French Open semi-finals. The German world number three turned his ankle while trailing eventual champion Rafael Nadal in the last four in Paris last week, screaming in pain before retiring from the match. The 25-year-old did not say when he will be back on court, but looks certain to miss Wimbledon, which begins on June 20. The U.S. Open starts on August 29. Zarev is still waiting for a maiden Grand Slam title, despite winning five Master Trophies and at the ATP Finals twice. And with that, we've come to the end of Trust News Update. Don't forget to follow us across all our social media platforms. I'm Dashan Husseina Usman. Thanks for watching.